Now, here is just another day at JFK. American 2 Heavy 10 left, heading 260. You're eight miles from uh, Zalpo. Maintain 2000 until established. Local eyes are clear. ILS runway 22 left approach. 260, clear ILS 22 left approach. 2000 until established. American 2 Heavy. American 2 Heavy, can I take Kennedy Tower on 1 Rhino Point 1? Good day. Thank you, American 2 Heavy. American 2 Heavy, ILS uh, 2-2 uh, left. American 2 Heavy, Kennedy Tower, only 2-2 left. You're number 2 for the field. Traffic's on a 4-mile final with 3-1 right. Wind is 3-2-0 at 2-2. Clear to land, only 2-2 left. 2-2 left, American 2 Heavy. Heavy digital for 2-2 left. American 2 Heavy, 2-2 left. You're clear to land. Clear to land. 2-2 left. Your, your local ice is not iron. Okay, I will double check it. American 2 Heavy will just reset it, should be coming back up in a little while. Wind now 32023, gusts into 35. American 2 2, uh, we can't land on 2 uh, 2. Uh, we're breaking off approach, and if you don't give us to uh, runway uh, 3 1 right, we're going to declare emergency. Alright, I'll pass it along, fly runway heading for now. Okay, we're declaring emergency, we're going to land 3 1 right, we're going to go left, end up coming around. American 2 Heavy, just fly runway heading. Sure, the area. Okay, you're saying you're declaring an emergency at this? Three times I've told you that. Three times we're declaring an emergency. Okay, I just want to verify. I know you told me if you didn't get 31 right, you would have to declare an emergency. Okay, understand. Fly runway heading. Right. i got to get you a turn. No, we can't. Jet Blue 62, the left on Alpha and monitor ground to the ramp. That's Alpha, monitor ground. Jet Blue 62. Tower, Texas 1250, ILS, 2 left. I head in 180. You know, American 2 Heavy, uh, we are turning around to the left here and landing on 3-1. Remove everybody from our way. We've declared an emergency. We're on a visual. All right, American 2 Heavy, 3 one right, clear to land with 31024, gusts in the 3-4. Thank you. Clear to land on runway 3-1 right, American 2 Heavy. Cactus 12, maintain 2000, cancel approach clearance. Maintain 2000, cancel approach clearance, Cactus 12. Have Cactus 12, so there was no ILS up to that runway. Cactus 12, just fly runway heading for now, maintain 2000. Maintain runway heading, sir, Cactus 12. Peter, this is one of the best examples I've ever seen of a pilot asserting his authority to declare an emergency. I mean, this pilot to me is a hero. As you know, I teach single pilot jets, and in turbines and turboprops, turbojets, we can run out of gas really, really fast. So, what do you think was going on here, folks? Well, it uh, sure seemed like he was low on fuel. And what you don't really see in this uh, earlier in, in the recording, he had been dodging clouds all the way in. This was a heck of a weather day at JFK. So he would diverted left, he diverted right, and finally worked his way in. Um, he, the localizer went out, so he immediately reverted to a visual approach. The wind exceeded his landing limitations, so he immediately said, I need to change the 3-1 right. I mean, curveballs were coming in from the left, from the right, and this pilot was handling it, executing his authority, making decisions, and brought the plane in and landed it. Yeah, he did a phenomenal job. I mean, it's one of the best recordings I think I've heard in all my years of flying. It really, first time I heard it, it made the hair on the back of my neck stand up, but it, the pilot did a phenomenal job. So, folks, we're talking about fuel I mean, that's clearly what happened here, in case you're wondering at home. So let's look at what we call the three stages of low fuel. Stage number one, you threaten to declare minimum fuel. Stage two, you declare minimum fuel. And stage three, you declare a fuel emergency. Peter's going to break it down. Yeah, what I like to do, Jeff, is I like to think in terms of how much fuel I'm going to have when I land at my alternate. And from there... I'm determining web, to what degree I have low fuel or I'm short on fuel. And the first stage, if it looks like ATC is starting to delay you around and you're going to be landing with whatever your minimums are, the legal minimums we know for landing at the alternate is with an additional 45 minutes, my personal minimums, I want to land at my alternate with an additional hour. If it looks like there's starting to be delays and you're getting close to that time anyway, then let ATC know, look, if you start delaying me, I will be declaring minimum fuel. Then you, if you get to the point where, without any undue delay, you would indeed land with that 45 minutes of fuel, 
then you declare minimum fuel. And that's basically saying, I can make it, I'm still legal, but I can't be vectored around, you can't put me in a hold, because then I will no longer be legal. Then if the circumstances change again, or they put you in a hold, or as sometimes ATC will do, at that point, you need to declare the emergency and assert your PIC authority and figure out some way to proceed so that you land with sufficient fuel to remain safe. Yeah, I'll tell you that right now. We've all been in that situation. It is no fun landing with low fuel, yeah. especially when you didn't plan on landing with low fuel. And, you know, that'll really make you rethink, uh, you know, your tactics for flying and all that. So those are the three stages of low fuel. And I think a story that a lot of people can relate to is I was once flying in Phoenix, Arizona to go for an IFR day, if you can believe it's IFR in Phoenix, right? Oh, it happens once in a blue moon. And I was going, I was on board a Cessna 182 with four CFIIs. Come on, folks, flights don't get any more dangerous, Peter, than uh, four CFIIs on an airplane. No, I thought two was bad, but when you told me that you were flying with four CFIs, and man, that made the hair on my neck crawl. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody wanted a piece of, you know, actual IFR because a lot of double eyes who teach in Phoenix, it's rare that they see it. So there I am after a wonderful morning of shooting approaches down to minimums. And we go to do this flight from Phoenix's Williams Gateway, India Whiskey Alpha, back to where the airplane was based, which was a stellar air park in Chandler, Papa One Niner. I took an hour and a half of fuel to do a 10-minute flight in IFR. And the airport was right at minimums. My alternate was Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, which had just come above alternate weather minimums. So there I am flying along, and all of a sudden the controller, who originally had a nice female controller, and she was bringing me into the Jared intersection, all of a sudden a male controller comes on, who's obviously the supervisor, and says to me, hey, listen, I can't let you shoot that approach into Stellar Airport, the good old VOR Alpha, because if I let you do that, I'll have to shut down Sky Harbor Airport. So tell you what, proceed to the Jared intersection, and you can hold for three hours and 45 minutes. Now, <laughs> I turned to all the flight instructors on board. I happened to be in the right seat, and I said, watch this. So I keyed up the mic and said, Skyline 8 9 Bravo, I understand the holding instructions, but just be advised, in one zero minutes, 10 minutes from now, I'm going to be declaring minimum fuel. So, Peter, how long do you think I held, or how many laps around the hold at Jared Intersection do you think I did? Well, you would think 10 minutes, but I remember you telling me the story, and I think you maybe did just one lap. That's it, Peter. One lap. Now, remember, was I, I, de declared, I didn't declare minimum fuel. What I basically did was threaten to declare minimum fuel. So to take an hour and a half of fuel, was I lying? No. No, I was not, right? Because you have to figure if I shot the approach into the Stellar Air Park and I went missed, came back to Jared, and then lost my radios and had to figure out, okay, now how do I make it to my filed alternate, find